Hello, and welcome to Let's Just Talk. I'm your host, Hami. Today, we are joined by the Center for Middle East Studies at Brown University to discuss the role and history of feminism in the Middle East and North Africa. To offer her thoughts on this issue, we are joined by Dr. Nadia Alali, a professor of international studies and anthropology and Middle East studies. Her main research interests revolve around feminist activism and gendered mobilization, with a focus on Iraq, Egypt, Lebanon, Turkey, and the Kurdish political uh, movement. Her publications include What Kind of Liberation, Women and the Occupation of Iraq, and Women in War in the Middle East, uh, Transnational Perspectives. To begin, we are going to give our guest five to seven minutes to offer her thoughts on this issue. And before we dive into uh, the questions that we have prepared, Dr. Alali, welcome to uh, Let's Just Talk. Uh, you have the floor. Yeah, thank you very much. Well, I'm um, very happy to be talking about feminism, especially at this specific histor uh, historical moment where we, of course, see the recent protest movement in Iran, which are led by women and even young schoolgirls. So I assume we might be talking about this a bit later. But my work over the last um, two or three decades has focused on various feminist movements in the region. And throughout my uh, academic career and also my political activism, I've been trying to challenge some of the misconceptions that exist, especially in Western media and Western policy discourse, uh, both about women in the Middle East as being oppressed and without agency, but also the idea that feminism is something that's imported from the West, right? That it's a Western thing and that it's um, alien to the region. So although I'm an anthropologist by training mm -hmm. and I focus on contemporary feminist movements and I've worked mainly in the context of Egypt, mm -hmm. um, I was uh, in Egypt in the 90s and I, uh, my PhD was actually on the Egyptian women's movement. Mm -hmm. Subsequently, I worked on feminism in the context of Iraq and the impact of the invasion and occupation on women and gender relations in Iraq. Right. And Lebanon, Turkey and the Kurdish movement. And um, while I'm an anthropologist focusing on the here and now, mm -hmm. um, it is so important to historicize right. and to show the different trajectories of feminism. And, you know, I think it's also really important to keep in mind that when you look at feminisms in the region, mm -hmm. it exists on the continuum of secular and religious positions, because mm -hmm. I think that's another misconception. Um, and uh, increasingly, I find that feminism in the Middle East, as also in other contexts, in mm -hmm. the global south and also in Western contexts, mm -hmm. has increasingly become intersectional. And when I say intersectional in the context of the Middle East, I don't necessarily mean gender, race, and class mm -hmm. as it would apply right. to the United States when we talk about intersectionality. Right. When I talk about the Middle East, I'm looking at the specific power configurations that, that act upon people. Mm -hmm. So let's say in the context of Iraq, Yes, gender and patriarchy definitely would be one. Mm -hmm. Class would be another. Mm -hmm. But sectarianism, based on religious differences, so the differences between Sunni and Shia, mm -hmm. is an important power configuration. Or the differences and tensions between Arab and Kurds. Mm -hmm. right? So race is not so much an issue in the Iraqi context. But overall, we see that feminists in the region are much more intersectional in terms of their demands and their struggle. Right. Uh, thank you so much for breaking that down for us. Mm. Um, to begin, you talked about the importance of historicizing mm -hmm. this conversation and these issues. Yeah. Um, so before we start historicizing, can we first define what we sure. mean by feminism? Yes. Because feminism means different things of in different contexts. Yes. Um, and then after that, let's jump into uh, the history of the feminism that we are talking about mm -hmm. in the Middle East and help us understand the different contexts that generated these different versions of feminism mm -hmm. because the Middle East is huge of and course. heterogeneous. Yes, yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, no, I'm glad you're starting with that because, you know, we might use the term quite casually and might actually mean different things. Mm -hmm. So to my mind, when I say feminism, the basic working definition is a recognition that there are structural inequalities mm -hmm. 
based on gender and based on patriarchy. Mm. And the second part of feminism, in my view, is that following this recognition in attempt to change and transform these unequal relations. Right. Okay. Now, what do you do with that? How you interpret it? Mm -hmm. How do you want to analyze it? How you want to change it? Mm -hmm. There are so many different strands of feminisms, right? right? So you could have like the m very widespread form of feminism is a liberal rights-based feminism. Mm -hmm. Sort of the idea that if you just have the right laws, right. if you just have enough women in certain power positions, mm -hmm. that addresses the problem. Right. But of course, history and different empirical contexts have shown that liberal rights-based feminism does not address the structural inequalities in terms of who has access to rights. Mm. You know, women who can't read or write right. don't have access to even the laws. Right. They might not be able to afford a lawyer, mm. right? So it's not just enough to have legal reform, legal changes, and it's not just enough to, we, we say, add women and stir. Right. You know, add women to the mix, stir it, but it's still the same mix, right. you know? The feminism that I personally adhere to mm -hmm. is a feminism that tries to change power structures. I don't want to be, it's not my ambition to be just like men. Right. I mean, and this is of course a stereotypical way, but unfortunately, um, what happens in reality, of course, is that a very easy, simplistic way of empowerment and equality mm. sort of just put women in power positions. It's right? sort of like have nominal representation without any form of structural change. Exactly, exactly, yes. But in the Middle East, I would say the main forms of feminisms that exist mm. are a liberal rights-based feminism, mm. Marxist feminism, because there is a strong tradition of socialist and Marxist political thought mm. in the region, and emerging out of that, you have also have feminist uh, groups. Mm. I mean, forced, first and foremost, I'm thinking in Yemen, uh, but also in Palestine, in um, Turkey, in Egypt, mm. in many countries, also in Iraq, actually. Then you have um, an Islamic feminism, mm. So the idea that it is not religion per se, so Islam, that is responsible for existing inequalities and forms of injustices, right. but it's the interpretation of Islam. Right. And the interpretation of Islam that historically is being carried out by conservative old men. Right. Right? So Islamic feminism is the idea that women need to become learned and knowledgeable about Islamic sources and right. then reinterpret them right, right with themselves. an egalitarian. So there's that. You also have post-colonial feminism, right. sort of the idea that um, the, the impact of colonialism on the region, mm. and, uh, but also recognizing, it's not just about recognizing the impact of colonialism, but mm. also the role that um, national elitist political powers have played, mm. right? Uh, because we know that historically it's not just colonial powers that have messed up countries, but also local elites have been colluding and that. contributing to that, yes. right? And, uh, but you know, the, the kind of working at the intersections of patriarchy and colonialism and also, you know, looking at more local, national, and regional power configuration. So what I'm saying is that there is a range of different forms of feminism right. in the Middle East mm -hmm. as there is in the West as well. All right, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. And speaking of in the Middle East and the West, yes. um, you spoke about misconceptions that you are trying to address. Mm -hmm. um, could you speak to how the different versions of feminism that you spoke about are indigenous to feminism? Because often in the West, we approach the conversation of women's rights in the Middle East and North Africa as like, we need to go liberate them. Yes. Or like, we need to, or like they're backwards and it is our responsibility yes. to uh, sort of help liberate or like yes. import feminism to the West. Yes. And also often it is seen that like, uh, opponents of various forms of feminism in the Middle East mm -hmm. argue, attempt to discredit um, feminist movements or women movements in particular as 
agenda is being set by the West. Absolutely. Um, and so, yeah, how do, how do you, what, what is your take on mm -hmm. that? Yes. You know, this is exactly what's happening in Iran right now, right? right? Where the government is saying this is being instigated, you know, by the CIA, by the West, um, not recognizing, of course, the long local history mm -hmm. of women's and feminist mobilization inside Iran. Mm -hmm. right? If you look at the region historically, we actually find that it's the beginning of the 20th century. So I'm, I'm speaking here, you know, 1910, 1911, 1920, and so on. Right. When in the context of independent struggle, mm -hmm. anti-colonial struggle, mm -hmm. women in Egypt, in Palestine, in Iraq, and so on, went out on the street to protest against um, foreign meddling, so in the context of these countries, British mm -hmm. meddling, but at the same time also started to make claims for themselves. Mm -hmm. Women's right to education, mm -hmm. women's right to vote, mm -hmm. right? And so we have a situation where political spaces opened up for women mm -hmm. in the context of independence struggle, right? right? Um, and, uh, you know, even in places that were not colonized, like Turkey or Iran, you have had women mobilizing. Initially, it was maybe more just elite women being involved in charity organizations. Mm -hmm. But increasingly, it started opening up and women started to mobilize around. The main issues initially were women's access to education, right. women's right to vote. So like in a place like Egypt, Following independence and following, um, this is Gamal Abdel Nasser in Egypt, mm -hmm. um, although women had been promised, you know, once we gain our independence from right. the British, you will get your right to vote. Right. But when it happened, they did not get the right to vote. Yeah, I wanted to bring that up yeah. as well. There is a fear that women are usually at the forefront of these issues yes. or like starting and sparking these issues of change and revolution um, but once the revolution happens or the regime's changes have occurred they tend to be forgotten yes, yes. so uh, in the context of Iran right now there's a fear that like women are leading the charge for regime change for you know ousting the current uh, government that's in place mm -hmm. but once this happened what's next for women yeah so I mean a few points behind me first of all um, it is true, as you say, that historically, when we look, Egypt's women actually had to go on hunger strike. Feminists went on hunger strike mm -hmm. and stormed parliament and got involved in non-violent direct action mm -hmm. in order to get the right to vote. Right. Okay? But, you know, we found it in Algeria, we mm -hmm. found it in Palestine. We also found it, of course, in Eritrea and Vietnam, where women were part of these revolutionary movements, often even involving mm -hmm. armed struggle. Right. But then, you know, when it, the, the goal, the wider goal was achieved, women were disbanded, dismissed, and being told to go back to their traditional roles. Right. So this has been the history of women's involvement in these protests. Right. However, to my mind, there has been a shift. Right. Okay? Because when you see what has been happening since the beginning of the protest movements in the region, I'm speaking now Tunisia, end of 2010, right. Egypt, beginning of 2011, and so on. Yes, it started out also with this sort of um, idea that we have to address the wider issues, we have to get rid of these corrupt leaders, and then, you know, women and gender issues are secondary, mm -hmm. right? However, this um, has been changing because of the recognition that um, gender-based violence, women's issues, are actually central to the wider struggle against authoritarianism, exactly. right? And um, so women, it's not only that women are now saying, well, we are not just going to wait our turn mm -hmm. until the wider issues are addressed and then you address our issues in terms of, you know, being harassed or, you know, have not having access to resources, um, having um, dress codes imposed on us. But increasingly, and this is a big shift, Hami, I, I think that many 
more men, especially young men, start to recognize that if they want a different future, if they want a um, government that is less corrupt, that is less authoritarian, that is less uh, involved in human rights abuses, that's more fair, more just, gender issues have to be at the center. Right. And that's a big shift. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for that. But I mean, there was, there's another issue, because your initial question was about this East, um, Middle Eastern feminism versus f Western feminism, right. right? And how do I challenge this? And I want to go back to that question, because as much as my, my strategy has to be to challenge homogenized accounts of Middle Eastern feminism and the idea that it's something that's imported from the West and I'm able to point to the long history of feminist activism in, in the um, Middle East. My strategy has also to be to really oppose this idea that feminism is inherent to the West yeah. okay? and that the West stands for women's rights. Okay? Yeah. What I see in the West and as much as we, yes, exactly, as much as we need to challenge homogenized accounts of the Middle East, we need to challenge homogenized accounts of the West. Not only in terms of huge differences between the US and Canada and different European countries, right, but also within each country, because what we see globally is actually the polarization of um, societies in which whether you're in the Middle East or in Western context, parts of society has shift towards the political right and linked towards this shift is a kind of anti-feminist, anti-gender discourse, often homophobic, okay. while you know, other strands of society, a kind of liberal to progressive spectrum, is very much putting gender-based equality, challenging heteronormativity at the center of their politics. Right. And we see this everywhere. 